Okay, so being as Halloween is on the approach, I've decided to do a zombie makeup for you. I've gone for a theatrical looking zombie as opposed to one you see on telly. It looks really gruesome, although this does look gruesome. I've made it more simplistic for you. All the products I've used, you can buy alternatives for any stores that sell Halloween makeup. You'll be able to get grease paints, um, wax, etc. So it should be easy enough for you to follow. So I'm starting off by blocking the brows. This isn't something you have to do. I'm not doing a neat job of it. It's literally just to cover the brows so that when the foundation's over that part of the brow, it makes the forehead look bigger. Um, as I said, it's not something that's necessary. So that's up to you. I've literally just combed the hairs and now I'm applying the wax with a spatula. Uh, guys' hairs are a little bit harder to cover, but as I said, it's not, this isn't supposed to be neat. It's a zombie makeup. The messier, the better anyway. If you've seen my videos before, I've done a lot of um, blocking out of the brow, so you'll see a, a neater version of this. The trick is to flatten the hairs in the direction of the hair growth. Um, with the guys' hairs, obviously, they've got a lot more than some of the women, so I'm just going around doing all the little tiny villous white hairs, etc. I reiterate, this does not have to be neat. So now I'm taking the Krylan sealant to put over the top. You can also use Pritt Stick to block out brows where you wouldn't necessarily need to use a sealant so there are ways that you can do this alternatively. So just smooth the sealant on with a spatula making sure you covered all the wax. Now I'm taking my Krylan latex. You can get latex in any of the stores that sell in Halloween makeup. You need to apply the latex with a really old brush, something that you're not going to use anymore because it will absolutely ruin the bristles and seal it all together. If you're going to be using latex over any hair, such as eyebrow hairs without blocking it down, you need to put Vaseline on because it will rip the hairs out otherwise. My model's trimmed his facial hair so I don't need to apply any Vaseline there, but if I was to be applying it around the hairline, I would apply the latex to the skin and Vaseline around the edge so it didn't pull any of the hairs out. So right now I'm applying just tissue, um, one ply to the latex and then just letting it dry and then applying more latex over the tissue so you end up getting slightly more solid plasticky um, built up area. I'm obviously going for a few bite marks in the cheeks and the worn away skin so I'm just building up an area. You can do that, you can decide however you want it to look. If you want to go for a real built up area, you know, make a real feature of one part of the face then I'd suggest using a hairdryer to dry each section of the latex and then you can put more latex on top and you haven't got to sit there and wait for the drying period. Try to apply some bits around the face, don't make it look too symmetrical, you kind of want it just to be like what I'm doing, sort of a little bit on the forehead and then sort of around the cheeks, it's totally up to you but you don't want to be too symmetrical with it. You can see the state of my brush now, um, but this is quite good because the, the bundle of latex that's on the end of the, the bristles has now become very tacky obviously, so as you start to push against the latex you've got on the skin, it pulls off of itself so it creates like little potholes and um, little sections of skin that lift so that's you know what you can put all the blood underneath it's a really good technique just dab against the tissue and, and uh, pull it to lift off the skin and you'll create all the the gaping holes as the latex starts to dry you'll see that it starts to go a bit see-through but you've laid down the groundwork and the foundations now for really like mottled skin and uneven skin tone because that's what you really want to go for with a zombie for this zombie, I'm applying um, a foundation that's got a slightly more grey tone. I've added a bit of green to it. Um, but if I was doing it for TV, I would probably leave the skin a little bit more natural and just highlight and contour just to, to make it more zombie-like. I'm just working the foundation in with a domed foundation brush and then just buffing it in with flat-top kabuki just to get a nice smooth finish. Um, just work it over the latex. It does, you know, it shouldn't move. It's been layered on now so you can just work that in so you get an overall skin tone to begin with. Again this process doesn't have to be overly neat, just get it around the eyes because you're going to be uh, making the skin tone uneven anyway eventually but to start with you want a good base to work with. So just make sure you get in all the crevices of all the latex you've applied. Um, remember if you're doing it for Halloween take it down the neck over the years because you want it to be all consistent. If you want to go for a more greeny skin tone, that's totally up to you. You do what you would like to look like. Um, I'm covering the brows a little bit. Normally when I do brows, I really cover them well, but say it's 
a zombie. It doesn't need to be too neat. Just sit in the base with a powder so that I can work on top of it and it's not all going to be sticky and tacky. So don't be shy and caking the powder on. Obviously I'm not, you can see. I'm not sure the model's entirely loving that part. Latex naturally dries quite sticky so you just want to make sure you're getting it everywhere. And remember to take it down the neck and over the ears if that's where you've applied all the makeup. Next we're going to darken the sockets of the eyes so I'm taking the Louise Young Eye Palette and I'm using both the browns and I'm taking that all over the top of the lid. The aim for this bit is to make real dark circles where the sockets are. Um, I'm starting with the lightest of the two browns and just building it up to how dark I want to get. I will be getting darker as the tutorial goes on. Um, but yeah, it's really your preference on how dark and gaunt you want your face to look. The slimmer and the sicklier the better. Make the darkest point of the eye the inside corner, you know, the corner of the bridge of the nose. That will really like, make the face look sunken and tired and, and like worn. You can feel the socket bone under your eye with your finger. If you just feel that in where you feel like when you get puffy or you get bags, you want to really darken that. I'm using an angle brush and the brown just to define those lines. Um, you kind of want to do the real puffy bag just underneath your eye and then underneath where obviously the line of the socket is and I'm also taking it if you frown and you get those little lines you kind of want to emphasize those it just gives a more angry appearance which obviously zombies are just using that brush to take the color just down where the smile lines are gives you a more aged appearance and just looking tired and worn out And now I'm just blending away at those lines just to soften them so they look more like shadows as opposed to drawn on lines. By adding shading around by the temples, you're emphasising the brow bone and you're making your face look more sallow and gaunt. Again, something that is required when doing a zombie makeup. So just to get a nice blend on it, I'm just working that colour in in circular motions. A theatrical zombie classically tends to have two prominent bones on their forehead so I'm creating like a, a V shape shaded area on the forehead and obviously with the temples um, it will make these two areas stand out. It's all about building with this look so I'm going over my shading again and I continue to do so as the tutorial goes on. Again it's your personal preference. As we go on, I can see that I'd like it a bit darker. I want to emphasise different areas. Ideally, you want to hollow out the cheeks a little bit. Um, if you've done like I've done and put a lot of latex on the cheeks, this can become quite difficult. So I'm working with the side that I'm able to. I'm also taking the shading down the nose because again, it's all about making the face really thin and um, sallow looking and ill and just emphasising some of the parts that you've already done. And I'm just taking that around the corners of the nose with the same colour and just blending it. You can also use your finger to blend it out. This is called a burn wheel and I'm using the black and the red and I'm just taking that on a little fluffy brush and I'm just really darkening the wounds. I'm starting by working it inside the little holes that I've made with the latex. Really work the bristles into the lumps and bumps that you've created. It will give it real texture and depth. I always start with the pinky ready base first, that's the bloodline, and then I add the black colouring just to give it more depth. It looks a little bit darker, like it's a really deep wound with congealed blood. The next stage is to take wound filler, and I use a spatula to apply this. It's a really thick, a little bit like congealed blood um, that you want to sort of push into all the little crevices and all the, the gaping holes you've made, and this will make it look really deep and dark and, and gooey. If you start off by applying it thickly, you can then blend it out a little bit with the spatula. You can even use your fingers, it is sticky and messy, so be warned. Um, and then I take a brush and I just start to blend out all the edges. To do this, I add a little bit of the red colour that we use to fill the wounds in with. Then I just work out all the way around all the little bit of latex that you've applied from earlier. It just makes it look sore and open. This is the same sort of technique you'd use for doing burns, but the latex application would be slightly different. You would 
um, used more latex to build up the skin to look broken and, and obviously burn and charred. So with this next stage, it's up to you if you want to do it before you do the wound filler or after. Obviously this is how I've done it on the day. I'm creating uh, little visible veins. So if you were creating a dead body, the veins would be really visible because all the blood would have drained from the skin. So they would have a really deep, uh, you can go with purples or browns. I'm just sticking with brown just because it's sort of the theme of the look that I've gone for. Um, I've just taken an angle brush and obviously the brown I've used from earlier. And I'm just creating little squiggly lines and then just to go over them so they're not as visible, I'm just using the concealer that's left on my brush and then I'm just patting it in gently. To build on this look, I'm using uh, theatrical blood. Um, this is a really liquidy sort of one compared to like the wound filler we've used earlier. So I'm just using a fluffy brush and I'm just blending that on top of the wound filler and the red that we've applied to the latex. To get the best effect with this, I would say stipple it on with the brush. You don't want any brush marks, any strokes and then using your finger just to dab it on all the way around and it just gives it a more realistic effect to the blood. On some of the heavy creases, I'm just working it in using circular motions so it gets right in and then I, again stippling out with my finger. So just go around and do this to all the parts that you've already created from earlier. Depending on how gory you want it to be, I'm joining it up so the idea is that the zombie I'm creating has really sort of gone out bit and people etc so the blood's going to be all around the mouth, up the cheeks, down the neck. Just want it to look really infected and, and just really sickly. So as I said earlier it's about building on the looks and I did mention I would be going darker again so again it's your preference on how you want dark you want you know you want your eyes to look but obviously being as it's a theatrical look I want it to look quite intense. I do apologise because the lighting does keep changing from the beginning of the tutorial to now so it's hard to get a true colour but as I say going really dark on the eyes will really make the contact lenses pop. And obviously the darker the eyes the better as it looks more deathly and zombie like. Just using a sponge and some of the red from the burn wheel I've just applied that around the mouth and then I'm using my spatula just to smear on some of the wound filler. You can probably tell from Billy's facial expressions that it isn't the nicest of smells. It smells a little bit like raisins but old raisins. So just building on this working it all around the jaw, taking it down the neck, filling in all those little patches with the sponge with the red on from earlier and then um, just yeah blending it all around. I'm also going to take more of the, the blood from the um, TV blood and just sponging that on top because you want it to look really weepy. Using the spatula I'm just dripping blood on top because it just gives a really good effect. And that's kind of the look overall and now it's just to pop the contact lenses in. So I hope you've enjoyed it and happy Halloween!